Uh, let us start uh, recalling that what we have done till now is looking at various kind of uh, functions in uh, economics that depended on one variable. A typical example was that of a production function which uh, normally may depend upon uh, a factor like a single variable like labor, it can depend on the uh, capital and so on. So, um, but in general uh, that is not the case. Uh, the production of a uh, product uh, depends on many things, uh, on many inputs. So, um, for example, uh, let us uh, look at some scenario. A pharmacy sells two brand of aspirin. Brand A sells for rupees 1.25 per bottle and the brand B sells for rupees 1.5 per bottle. So, some uh, pharmacy is selling two products of aspirin one at 1.25 per bottle and another one at 1.5 per bottle. So, what is the revenue function for uh, aspirin, selling of aspirin for that uh, particular pharmacy? So, to uh, write down the um, revenue function, we will have to uh, look at how many units of brand A are sold and how many units of brand B are sold. So, let us uh, in mathematics that is one we do we do not know something we put x or y as the variables. So, uh, and another question we will like to answer later on is what is the revenue for a sprint if 1000 bottles of A and 150 bottles of B are sold. So, let us assume uh, that uh, to solve the problem that x denotes the number of bottles of brand A which are sold and y denotes the number of bottles of brand B that are sold. So, uh, now we will write down the revenue if uh, x bottles of brand A then the revenue from selling brand A would be x into 1.25 and the revenue from by selling brand B would be y into uh, 1.5. So, total revenue we well, can call as the revenue fun depends on two variables x and y x is the number of bottles of brand A being sold and y is the number of bottles of brand B being sold. So, total is 1.25 into x plus 1.5 into y. So, this gives a revenue function which depends on two variables x and y. Right? So, uh, so, this is a relationship which is actually a function. So, let us now um, solve the what are the asked for that if 100 bottles of brand A are sold and 150 bottles of B are sold, um, then the total revenue will be uh, R where revenue for X is equal to 100 and Y equal to 150. So, we will put the values uh, like in one variable now there are two variables, two quantities. So, X is equal to 100 and Y is equal to 150. So, we put those and compute. So, that gives you total amount to be equal to 350. So, this is a revenue for those many bottles of A and those many bottles of B. So, the important thing that I am trying to uh, motivate here is that uh, the problems in general in economics, uh, commerce and management, uh, the functions need not be of uh, one variable. The output may depend on lot of inputs of different kinds. So, here is uh, one example that we looked at. Here is another example which is very uh, uh, very important and uh, common in uh, economic scenario. It is called the Cobb Douglas production model. So, uh, that model uh, there is inputs are the labor and the capital and uh, the output is the, um, the output function Q depends on K and L. K is the capital and L is the labor and uh, the formula suggested by Cobb and Douglas is that it should be equal to A times L raised to power alpha and this should be uh, actually K here, K raised to power beta. Otherwise, it looks like a function of one variable. So, uh, the second one A raised to power alpha and K raised to power beta. So, uh, there is a typo here, this should be K raised to power beta. So, uh, this becomes a, um, so Cobb Douglas function, uh, production uh, function or uh, production model. Uh, depends on two variables uh, K and L. K is the capital, L is the labor. It is A times L raised to power alpha, K raised to power beta. Where this A, alpha and beta are all positive constants. 
uh, when later on when we study this slightly in detail, um, we will uh, probably uh, analyze this model a bit more. Uh, right. So, uh, let us define formally that a function of two variables is a function with a domain d in the subset of R2. So, it is a function with domain d from which is a subset of R2 taking values in R. So, this is called a function of two variables. So, here the domain has changed uh, for one variable the domain was a subset of the real line for functions of two variables the do domain is that of a subset of uh, the plane. So, this is a function of uh, two variables. Um, let us uh, write uh, such uh, functions are also normally called scalar fields. So, I will not go into details why they are called scalar fields. Basically, the idea is that the values of uh, a, a point in D f of uh, that value image of that is a scalar. So, that is why it is called the scalar field. This is important importance in physics and mathematics. So, this D is called the domain of the uh, domain of the function and uh, the set f of d uh, means for every point uh, x in d look at where f, f of x goes that is a number. So, that gives you a subset of uh, the real line. So, that is called the range. So, domain for a function of two variables is a subset of the plane R2 and the range is a subset of uh, the real line R. So, uh, this is what uh, function of two variables is. Um, one can actually consider functions of uh, more variables also. So, instead of taking d to be a subset of R2, you can take it to be a subset of R3, R4 and so on uh, depending on how many uh, variables, um, how many inputs are there going to be there in your consideration, in your analysis. We will uh, discuss only functions of two variables. Most of the um, mathematics that we will do carries over to functions of more than two variables also. But let us try to understand um, what we are trying to say for functions of two variables. So, uh, sometimes uh, the function is not explicitly uh, given that every point what is the image, it is specified by a formula. So, uh, when the function is given by a formula, then the set of all those values x in R2 or if it is a function of three variables R3 for which f of x is defined for which that form formula makes sense is called the natural domain of the function. So, let us look at uh, some examples of this. Uh, let us look at a function say given by a formula f of x y is equal to square root of 16 minus x square minus y square where x and y are real numbers. Now, because the right hand side is a square root and, uh, and we want f of x y to be a real number. So, square root of a uh, quantity makes sense only when that uh, quantity is a number which is bigger than or equal to 0. So, the natural domain for this function is all x comma y belonging to real line such that 16 minus x square minus y square is bigger than or equal to 0. Or same thing as saying x square plus y square is less than or equal to 16. So, this is the natural domain of the function and what will be the range of uh, this in function? So, range will be, uh, so here now you should understand uh, intuitively that if uh, x square plus y square is equal to 16, then the value is 0. So, the smallest value that uh, this will have is 0. And uh, we can uh, keep on uh, the, the maximum possible value that you can give is when we say for example, x is equal to 0 and uh, y is equal to 0, right. In that case, that will be the largest value for the function, right, f of x, y, because it is minus x square and minus y square. So, whenever x is po positive or negative, if it is non-zero, non then you will be subtracting something from 16. So, it will be smaller than 4. So, the largest value is 4. So, that way you analyze and say that the range of the function is the interval 0 to 4. So, this is a function given by a formula. Its so, natural domain is x square plus y square. All points in the plane say that x square plus y square is less than or equal to 16 and the range of this function is the interval 0 to 4. 
is a closed interval 0 to 4 because both the values 0 is taken when x square plus y square is equal to 16. You can choose any values x is equal to 0 and y equal to 4. So, that will give you the value 0 and when x is equal to um, uh, 0 and y equal to 0 that gives the largest value that is 4. So, it is a closed bounded interval 0 4 that is the range of this function. Let us look at another uh, function f of x y is equal to x plus y divided by x minus y. So, for this formula to make sense it is natural to have x minus y not equal to 0. So, the natural domain of this function is all points x comma y in R2 such that x minus y is not equal to 0. So, that is the natural domain of the function. So, x is not equal to y. Uh, geometrically, uh, this is the plane x uh, y in R2 that is a plane and what is x not equal to y? That means, you are removing the line x is equal to y from R2 and the remaining part is the domain of the function. So, this is a all the points where x minus y is equal to 0 is the equation of the line y equal to x, a line passing through 0 0 with slope uh, 45 degrees. So, the domain is R 2 minus the line x is equal to y and its range obviously is the whole of real line you can take everywhere. So, how do you find what is the range? So, let us put we want f of x y to be equal to some number alpha. So, then you can solve for x and y you can find many values of x and y such that this is equal to alpha. So, the natural domain for this is uh, uh, natural domain is the R 2 minus uh, the line x is equal to y and the range is the whole of real line. So, that is how mathematically you analyze what is the domain and what is the range of the function. So, let us start with a function of two variables. One would like to know what is the graph of this uh, function. See for a function of one variable f of x y right uh, y equal to f of x we said the graph is a subset of the plane R 2. So, it was a region in the plane R 2 and so what was the, the graph it was x comma um, f of x x belonging to the domain. So, that was the graph of the function. For a function of two variables, the graph is the set which describes everything about the function. So, if I take x and y in the domain and I know where is f of x y, then I know what is the function for every x y in the domain if I know f of x y, right? I know what is the function. So, the graph is going to be a subset of R 3. Okay? So, for a function of two variables where domain D is a subset of R 2, the graph is a subset of R 3. I hope all of you uh, remember or understand what is R 3. So, let me draw a picture of R 3 for the sake of those who have not gone through, uh, who have not come across what is R 3. So, R 3 like plane is represented by two axes x and y axis. So, this is how you represent a plane. So, that is x axis and that is y axis and every point has got two coordinates x and y. So, what is uh, the coordinate? Uh, so, you, to find what are these values you drop a perpendicular. So, this value is x and this height is y. So, this is y and that is x. So, that is how you locate a point in the plane. The coordinates means x y means x is the distance of that point from the y axis. So, that is the distance from the y axis that is x and y is the distance of the point from x axis. So, that is. So, in um, what is R 3? R 3 is normally represented by three coordinate axes. So, they are called x, y and z. And so, there are three uh, lines say that each is perpendicular to each other. So, all the three lines you can think it of as uh, a corner in a room where uh, the three uh, one wall the two walls are meeting in that corner and the ground is meeting the two walls. So, that is the axis. So, this is x axis. In fact, you can uh, these are the lines which are on the going on. So, this side is the positive side this side is the positive side and this is the negative side. 
and similarly this is the positive side and this is the negative side of the axis and similarly this is the positive up is normally taken as positive down is taken as negative right now how does this uh, tell us uh, how do you locate a point in the, the space so these three coordinate system is enough to locate a point in space so let us take a point x with coordinates x y and z so what is uh, x y and z so first of all from this point if you are moving parallel to the z axis you are moving parallel so when you move parallel you will hit this plane the what is the x y plane so this plane x y plane you will hit at some point so that that distance is the distance z now once you have reached that point from this point you can uh, move in the x y plane either parallel to y axis or parallel to x axis so let us move parallel to y axis so this is the y axis if you move parallel to y axis you will hit the x axis at some point so that distance is y and if you move from that point to origin so that is x so that is how you locate the point x y and z so that is the perpendicular distance uh, from the three uh, planes basically you can call it okay so this is the perpendicular distance that is the distance of this point from the x y plane and this y is a perpendicular distance you can also think of this y is same as this y so that is a perpendicular distance of the point from the x z plane so that is y and x is nothing but the perpendicular distance of the point from the y z plane so that is the this distance so that is how we locate points in space so that is what is r3 so in r3 so this is what is r3 denoted as so r3 is written as a triplet x y and z where each x y and z belong to real line so this is the coordinate system in the uh, space which helps us to locate uniquely a point and given coordinates the point is uniquely located and vice versa so that is how uh, we use this so uh, the graph of a function so we were looking at the graph of a function of uh, two variables so we are given a function f from a domain d contained in r2 taking values in r so its graph we are saying is nothing but look at a point x comma y x comma y belonging to the domain and look at its value f of x y call it as the third coordinate z so look at this triple so this is a subset of r3 so geometrically you can visualize it as follows this is x this is y and this is z so what is the domain domain is a subset of the real line uh, r2 so this is the domain so let us say the domain of the function is this set d so that is the domain of the function so for every point in the domain of the function so this is the point x comma y for every point in the domain of the function what we do we look at what is f of x y that is my z so this is z equal to f of x y third coordinate so to locate the third coordinate from the x y plane i will move a distance which is z equal to f x y so we will get the point p so that is the point p x y f x y so for every point you go up you will get a point in r3 for every point in the domain you will get a point and all these points will give you some kind of object in r3 right so where all these dots will lie and that is precisely what is the graph of the function in three variables uh, graph of the function of two variables so that is what this picture is telling you xy is the point in the domain for every xy look at the point z so collect all these points z so they will lie on some uh, shape in r3 in fact that is what we call as a surface in r3 so that surface in r3 is the graph of a function of two variables in one variable the graph was a curve in plane for uh, a function of two variables the graph is a surface so one can try to uh, visualize this 
So graph of a function of one variable. So that is what. So take a domain D and take a point in the domain and go to the height that will give you a point Z and locate all these points, put them together that gives you a surface in R3 that is what is the um, uh, graph of the function of two variables, right. So let us uh, go over a bit more. So um, how do you visualize uh, this is a kind of a surface, right. How do you visualize what kind of a surface uh, we will get for the, as the graph of a function? For function of one variable, it is not very difficult to visualize, uh, it is a curve only. But now it is a three dimensional object and to visualize that one uh, looks at two things. One is called the level curves. For a point x, y in the domain, look at the points f of x, y equal to c. So look at all the points in the domain where which take a given value c. So these are called, uh, these are the, see when f of x, y is equal to c, that gives you a relation between x and y. So it will be a kind of a curve in the domain of the function. So this is called a, a level curve uh, for the function. So level curve is a part of the domain for which the height, right, the f of x, y is equal to c at a height c in the graph of the function. So all those points uh, c in the graph of the function, if you look at what are the points x, y which are mapped into c, then that is called the level curve. So this is a two dimensional, uh, so f of x, y is a curve in the domain of the function. So that is what is called the level curve of the function at the point z is equal to c. This is one way of visualizing uh, the uh, a function of three variables. This is a set of points in the domain of f where f takes a constant value c. So that is the best way of describing it. So let us look at an example. So look at that example we had x plus y uh, divided by x minus y, x not equal to y. And let us take a point uh, c in R and see what is the level curve for uh, uh, where the function takes the constant value c. That means x plus y divided by x minus y is equal to c and that is same as saying uh, x is not equal to y. So that is same as saying y is equal to c minus 1 divided by c plus 1 into x. So uh, this is again a equation of a line passing through the origin with this as the slope where c is the given constant. So these are the lines passing through the origin as the um, level curves for the uh, level curves for the uh, function f of x, y is equal to x plus y divided by x minus y. So they gave you, give you some idea that in the domain at this point, this is the value taken, right? So at this point, the value will be taken as c and given by this, okay? So that is particular c. For, so these different lines are for different values of c. So we'll get different curves as you change the values of c. So for this function, for each value of c gives you a line through the origin, so level curves for different values of c are nothing but lines through the origin. Let us look at uh, the function f of x, y is equal to x 100 minus x square minus y square. So uh, first of all, uh, what is the natural domain of the function? Uh, the domain of the function is um, uh, f of x, y is equal to 100 minus x square minus y square. So domain is whole of uh, R2, right? So all values are allowed, so that is okay. Now we want to find out what are the level curves for this. So level curve mean what? We want those points in the domain where this uh, value is equal to c. So 100 minus x square minus, uh, 100 minus x square minus y square equal to c. That means x square plus y square is equal to 100 minus c. So that gives you a, a circle of radius 100 minus c. So level curves are possible only when c is less than or equal to 100. For equal to 100, it will be the dot, okay. For all other points, it will be the circles. That means for different values of C, these are the level curves in the, for the uh, function. That means at this circle, the value taken will be the, at that value of C. So at 10, that will be the value taken at that circle. So all the points on the circle, when C is equal to 10, that gives you square root of 10 and so on. So these are the one way of visualizing uh, a function of uh, two variables, the graph of a function of two variables. Another way is 
to look at actual part of the surface for that particular height. So, these are called contour lines for the graph of the function. A contour line for a function of two variables is nothing but uh, is a points x, y and z in R3 say that x and y belong to the domain and z is equal to f x y. So, that means what? That means for a point in uh, the domain you are looking at all the points on the surface which are at a height c. So, essentially what you are doing is uh, contour lines so they indicate the points on the surface on the graph that are at a given height z is equal to c. So, you can also visualize. So, these are the sections of that surface cut by the plane z is equal to c. So, you is a surface. So, if you take a plane z is equal to c that is a plane per, uh, parallel to the x y plane. So, at a height z is equal to c. So, you see it what uh, contour it will cut at what curve it will cut. So, that curve is a part of the surface part of the graph. So, contour lines are part of the graph those points which are at a given height c. So, uh, uh, if you have ever looked at uh, a atlas, so normally the topography of a place is described uh, in terms of this level curves or contour lines. So, uh, if you have not ever looked at a atlas, so go back pick up an atlas and see what are contour lines. Uh, for example, if a mountain is to be described that there is a mountain um, uh, in a uh, area, then one describes the height and the various points on the surface on the mountain at a particular uh, height. So, that will give you uh, kind of uh, contour lines on that object. So, uh, this finds applications uh, not only in uh, economics, commerce and management, it finds up applications uh, in uh, right, uh, geography also. Right. So, uh, this is we are based of visualizing similarly for the function x plus y divided by x minus y the contour lines right will be the lines z z is equal to c. So, uh, these are the lines at a height z the equation of the line will be same. So, it is x comma y is computed in terms of uh, c. So, that is c minus 1 over c plus 1 x and the height is z coordinate is c. So, these are the lines various lines okay, for different values of c equal to 0, 1 and 2 and so on. So, these are the parts of the surface at a particular height c. So, that is these are some of the ways one uh, tries to visualize a 3D um, object surface uh, by contour lines and level curves. Uh, this is one of uh, this is a very important aspe aspect of uh, reconstruction problems. Uh, for example, in all uh, when you take a picture of uh, 3D object, you get 2D pictures, and constructing from them back the 3D picture uh, is something similar to that is uh, being done here. So uh, let us just uh, take the value take take from this point that for a function of two variables the domain is R2, the range is part of the real line and um, the natural values uh, natural domain for the function is um, wherever that formula given by the function makes sense for all the points x and y in the plane that is called the natural domain. All the values taken in the line uh, images are called the range as before and uh, to visualize a function of two variables one has to look for a subset of R 3. So, the graph of a function of two variables is a subset of R 3 and uh, there are two ways of visualizing them one is the level curves other is the contour lines. So, uh, with this introduction to functions of two variables we will continue our study in the next lecture. Thank you.